the Los Angeles International Airport has a plethora of lounges to pick from. Recently, on my way to New Zealand, I spent several hours at LAX waiting for my Fiji Airways flight. And thanks to my business class ticket, I had access to several of these lounges. And because I had several hours to kill, I decided to try them all. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my experience at the Star Alliance, One World, and Centurion lounges at LAX to see how they compare and which one was the best. Because I was connecting on an international flight, I spent most of my time at the Tom Bradley International Terminal in LAX. And within that terminal, there are several different lounges for various different global airlines. Thanks to my business class award ticket on Fiji Airways, I was able to gain access to the Star Alliance Lounge and the One World Lounge. It's kind of interesting that Fiji Airways, even though it's more technically part of One World, still had access to the Star Alliance, but sure enough, the gate attendant let me in for that one. And I gained access to the American Express Centurion Lounge thanks to my American Express Platinum card. The first lounge I visited was the One World Business Lounge. It's located one level above the main terminal. The One World Lounge was ginormous. My favorite part of the lounge was this area that had a fireplace and circular seating. It really reminded me of the flagship Alaska Airlines Lounge at SeaTac International Airport. The lounge was basically one large continuous space with the sections divided by different seating arrangements. There was a bar available at the lounge as well. I felt the lighting was a little bit darker than my personal preference within the lounge. There was a large buffet with a solid selection of cold and hot food options. My favorite part of the buffet was the ramen station where you can pick and choose your own toppings and make your own bowl of ramen. Next, I visited the Star Alliance Business Class Lounge. It's located one level above the One World Lounge. One of the neat things about this lounge is that it has an open terrace over the central terminal area, giving it a brighter ambiance. The Star Alliance Lounge had a brighter feel to it compared to the One World Lounge, which was a little bit stuffier feeling, even though it's quite large, but mostly due to the darker lighting. A variety of seating arrangements were also available at the Star Alliance Lounge, as well as a bar and self-serve beverage centers. The buffet at the Star Alliance Lounge wasn't as extensive as the one at the One World Lounge, Although the wine bottle display in the background was a nice touch. While I was there, the food options gave me the impression that it was more of a deli slash continental style where there were some sandwiches and wraps and not really much hot options. Besides going to the bar, there is a variety of self-serve options for alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. The Star Alliance Lounge also had a ramen bar. However, I found the broth and toppings at the Star Alliance Lounge to be less flavorful compared to the one at the One World Lounge. My final stop was the American Express Centurion Lounge. That one's actually located one level lower than the main terminal. My initial impression when I entered the lounge and walked around was that it was quite small. And the way it was set up, you have to make a lot of different turns to go to the different areas. And so I think having the space divided up the way it was um, made it seem smaller and more chaotic. The buffet had hot and cold options. While I was there, there was a hot soup, several different kinds of desserts, including cookies. And for the hot options, it included a Japanese marinated beef as well as roasted vegetables. After visiting all three lounges, my overall impressions were that the One World Lounge had great food selection that tasted good, and there was large open space to move around and find seating. The negative was that the lighting was a bit dark, so it can give you a little bit of a gloomy feel. 
So the Star Alliance Lounge, it had a nice and bright and airy ambiance to it with the open terrace. The negatives were the deli style food that didn't taste very good. The Centurion Lounge had decent hot food options. However, the space layout was rather strange. It felt really crowded and just overall less relaxing because of the chaotic feel because of the way the space was laid out and I think just the number of people that were in the lounge. So the best food I would have to give to the One World Lounge. The best environment was the Star Alliance Lounge. And of note, there are no priority pass lounges within LAX. And so if I had to choose again, should I have access to all these lounges again the next time I visit LAX and using the Tom Bradley International Terminal, I would probably just stick with the One World Lounge. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Have a great day.